When I was diagnosed, you know, a decade ago and was being treated at Sick Kids, around the uh, neurosurgery ward and the, the cancer unit at, at Sick Kids, I was always known as the kid with the questions. Jessica is extremely tenacious. She wants answers. I remember there was one question that just stumped everyone. It was at that moment where I was like, okay, well, we need to figure this out because I'm sitting here in this hospital bed and I want to go to school and I want to play with my friends and I want to go back to dance. And I'm asking these top world-renowned doctors who are amazing a question from my 10-year-old mind and they can't answer it. My name is Jessica Rosenblum. I'm a research student in the Rutka lab here at SickKids in the Brain Tumor Research Center. Jessica was about 10 years old when she first presented to sick kids. I happened to be the neurosurgeon on call the, the day that she came uh, seeking attention. I started uh, having severe headaches. It just felt like my head was going to explode. Jessica's tumor was located in a very delicate region of the brain. And the cause of the pressure was brain fluid that was building up as a result of her tumor blocking the pathways for normal drainage in the brain. When the doctors told my parents that they found a mass on the scan, and my mom told me the first thing that she asked the doctor who told her was, is this a death sentence? And they said, it doesn't have to be. Um, it doesn't have to be. So her first procedure was something called um, an endoscopic third ventriculostomy, which diverts the, the brain fluid that's building up to another avenue for drainage, and she underwent that perfectly. I didn't have a headache anymore. I just felt clear and better, almost like euphoric. Um, and I said to my mom, okay, I'm better. When can I go back to school? At that point, it still hadn't really set in that this was gonna be a long-term thing. We still didn't know what type of a lesion it was that was in the brain that was causing the blockage. At the time, the technology just wasn't there yet to, to classify exactly what I had. And so we did not want at first to do a major procedure for her if there was some other way of controlling her tumor. To do any type of procedure in that vicinity can run the risk of um, downstream adverse or side effects complications. Our next step was to do what's called a biopsy. It proved to be a tumor that's called an astrocytoma. I started chemotherapy. I would uh, go into the hospital every week and have my dose of chemo. Unfortunately, after the ninth round of chemotherapy, I woke up one morning not being able to feel my right side. Emergency MRI was done and that revealed that my tumor had not responded to chemo. Uh, and it had actually grown while I was on chemotherapy. Surgery was needed on my tumor that was initially deemed inoperable. Um, so that was very scary. My parents were prepared for the fact that I would likely need to relearn how to walk and you know, also preparing for the worst of not just brain surgery, but brain surgery in a very, very delicate location. We embarked on a, a major surgical procedure to help Jessica with her tumor. We reduced it to as small a component as possible. We drained the cyst. The surgery went better than anybody expected. I walked out of the hospital 10 days later, which everybody was shocked about. It was pretty miraculous, honestly. Jessica is amazing and she not only graduated from high school but is now studying nursing. I wanted to answer those questions that I had 10 years ago and I wanted to do more for people who were like me. I thought, hey, I could work at Sick Kids, you know, Dr. Eka said I could and ended up finding myself working with the man who saved my life on multiple occasions. And we're very proud of Jessica and everything that she's accomplished to date. And as far as I know, Jessica is a world first. Uh, someone with a brain tumor to come back and work in an academic environment like a brain tumor research center and to pursue questions in a research laboratory, that just doesn't happen very often. I walk in here every day feeling grateful because it, it's a world-class institution that's doing groundbreaking research. Jessica is involved in several of our uh, preclinical studies with MR-guided focused ultrasound. In the future, we're hoping that uh, children with 
other types of brain tumors that occur in deep central areas, as in Jessica's case, for example, um, that those types of tumors may also lend themselves to treatment with MR-guided focused uh, ultrasound. To be able to find treatments that are not only more effective or provide more options, but are also you know, less toxic um, to healthy tissue and healthy cells is super important because we want to see all kids survive a brain tumor diagnosis. We don't want to just see kids with brain tumors survive. We want to see them be able to thrive as well. And it's remarkable that she wants to not only study this problem, but to give back. And uh, she's a force of nature and optimistic and hopeful that Jessica will have her name on several publications in the record of uh, brain tumor research in the world that really shows that she's helped out and that she's made a remarkable contribution. For me, um, Dr. Edka is an amazing physician, an amazing person, an amazing mentor. Um, and it's been a real gift to not only be his patient, but to uh, learn from him. He's definitely a family member. Like my parents have said since I was a little kid, like, you know, there's a wedding invitation for your, for your wedding, waiting for Dr. Adka, which is still on the table. Uh, so he will be at my wedding for sure. <laughs>